Pauline Amaye was born in Fort Porto in western Uganda, but grew up mostly in Kabale, where her parents worked as medical personnel. She is a middle child, the fourth born in a family of seven. Her husband, Alfred Bangambachi, is the deputy regional police commander for Kampala Metropolitan North. With the nature of our work, you need somebody who really understands you and supports you, and uh, you can't know everything, so sometimes I really, um, I'm really lucky to have someone I can consult. They have two children, both girls. She is a disciplinarian by virtue of her work, and also because her parents, her father especially, made discipline a priority. Namaya recalls how he would come home and roll call his children by order of birth, and if one was missing, he would go looking. He put photos of himself, portraits in the house, and then he would tell you that wherever you are, I'm looking at you. And actually, when you stand in front of the photo, you'd see that he's looking at you. And then you turn aside, you see that the eyes seem to change in a way, and look at you. And even when you would be going to school, somehow he would find you on the way. So for example, when people would, when it would rain and kids want to play in the mud, you'd find daddy looking at you. <laughs> Namaya says that growing up, they were never sent to the shops. Instead, weekly shopping lists were presented to the head of the family. And we learned that there is planning, there is budgeting, you don't just spend things. She grew up in a home that many would envy, with their father taking care of things and their mother playing the supportive role. She was the coordinator. She knew everyone by character. One of the values Namaya is teaching her children is to save, to understand how to handle money, and so each of them has a piggy bank. It also helps me because I don't waste the change. I don't waste the change, so I know that. And this is also with my husband. He knows that the, the balance, if he has to spend any money and he has 1,000, 2,000, and then he has coins, that is for the children. And they will know how to use it. So, Growing up, she wanted to be a lawyer, though her father saw her more as a teacher. And so she studied education at university, majoring in literature and English. Namaya tried her hand at teaching for six months and then applied to join the police force. We were over 2,000 over 2,000 people and yet they wanted about um, less than 400 who were about 400 cadets who made it. She has always been a leader right from her early years in school. This and the determination to follow her dreams took her to the field of law and order. She remembers her first day when her siblings had escorted her to the training school. I was wearing a watch and then I had earrings and then they called me in front and asked me why, why would you come with these things to training? Have you come here to model? Now you start modeling in front of everybody so obviously I cried. <laughs> when somebody brought a bucket of very cold water, I was sleeping and splashed it on me. I knew that was the end. I went to the dormitory, packed my mosquito net which I had put on the bed, I packed it in the case and then I prepared my exit in the morning which was never to come. Things did get better the longer she stayed. Namaya started out as a cadet superintendent of police in 2007. In 2009, she was confirmed as an assistant superintendent of police. Shortly after, she was promoted to superintendent of police and is now a senior superintendent. She says unfairness towards others is one of the things that makes her sad. I really like to believe that we have a conscience and our conscience should guide us, but there are some who have lost it. More than anything, Namaya would like to see Uganda's youth gainfully employed, knowing that this will cap the growing crime rate. It's also a problem of, of, parent, of parenting because parents are so uh, involved into their work, they don't have time for their children, and by the time the child decides I'm not going to school anymore, you don't know when the child started thinking in that line. The police force has suffered a lot of backlash for handling situations in a manner that is deemed unacceptable. Just like the way our uh, personnel require professionalism, very many people out there require professionalism. So when you get a situation where you have an officer uh, who, is, who is not professional, and then you have uh, probably a civilian who is also acting uh, contrary to the law, and then you have that gap, you know? In that gap, anything can happen. And that's what we're trying to avoid, by ensuring that we train our officers, but also by ensuring that we agitate for information to the public. If, if, uh, if an officer acts unfairly to you or unjustly to you, you may report the case to police if it is a criminal case, or you may take the, the person to, to court if it is a civil case directly. She says that cases such as those of women being undressed with the blame apportioned to the police require a good amount of objectivity. Whereas you can demonstrate, you don't really have to go nude in public. 
the, cam the camera may capture a certain picture, but the evidence cannot run away. It's, it's a matter that we all need to look at and understand what is the intention in here. Because some people have come up and said, is it the policy of police to actually address people? But truly, where would a woman want to address a fellow woman? There is need for these women to also be sensitized, because I think maybe they are doing it without information, that actually it is criminal and morally it's not upright. Does she ever think of joining active politics? You can never say never. You just wake up in the morning and you're doing something and you're like, oh, did they say I should never have done it? Namaye went to Kabale Primary School, Mary Hill High School for O-Level, Branyanji Girls for A-Level, and Makere University for her undergraduate degree. She has trained in the Republic of Ireland and holds a postgraduate diploma from UMI. She is currently doing a Master's in Journalism and Communication. Josephine Karunji, NTV.